which if any, can help you with your predicament. Hinduism. The religion of Hinduism says that when you die, you'll be reincarnated. You'll come back as some other creature, like a cockroach or a rat if you've been bad, and if you've been good, you might come back as a prince. Well, that's like saying, when you jump out of this airplane, you'll get sucked back in as another passenger. If you've been bad, you'll get put down in economy class. If you've been good, you might get bumped up to first class. Well, that sounds like an interesting concept, but it does no good in helping you with your real problem of sinning against God and the reality of hell. Buddhism. Amazingly, Buddhism says that life and death are sort of an illusion. That's like standing on the edge of the plane and saying, I'm not really here, and there's no such thing as the law of gravity or the ground that I'm going to hit. That may temporarily help you deal with your fears, but it doesn't deal with the real problem of having sinned against God and the reality of hell. Islam. Now, interestingly, Islam does acknowledge the reality of sin and hell and God's justice, but the hope that it offers is that sinners can escape God's justice if they do good deeds, that God will see these deeds and because of them, hopefully show mercy. So the person's works are weighed on Judgment Day, and then it's decided who's saved and who's not, based on if they're a Muslim, if they've prayed, if their repentance is sincere, and they've performed enough righteous deeds to outweigh their bad ones. So Islam believes that you can earn God's mercy by your efforts. But that's like jumping out of the plane and believing that flapping your arms is going to save you from a 10,000 foot drop. But there's more to this. The law of God shows us that even the best of us is nothing more than a guilty criminal, standing exposed and without excuse before the throne of a perfect and holy judge. When that's understood, then our righteous deeds are actually seen as an attempt to bribe the judge of the universe. The Bible says that because of our guilt, anything we offer God for our justification, that is to get ourselves off the hook, is an abomination to Him. Islam, like other religions, cannot save you from the consequences of having sinned against God. Christianity. So why is Christianity any different? Aren't all religions the same? No. In Christianity, God himself provides a parachute for us. And the Bible says of the Savior, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So just as a parachute can save you from the law of gravity and its consequences, so the Savior perfectly solves your dilemma with the law of God and its consequences. It's the missing puzzle piece that you need. How did God solve our dilemma? The Bible says He satisfied His wrath by becoming a human being Himself and taking our punishment upon Himself. The scriptures tell us that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to Himself. Christianity provides the perfect parachute to save us from the consequences of the law we've transgressed. So to illustrate this more clearly, imagine that this plane is going down right now and you have to jump. Your heart is thumping in your chest. Why? Because you know that at any moment you're going to have to jump and the law of gravity is going to kill you when you hit the ground. Someone offers you the Mona Lisa. You push it aside. Then someone tries to give you the keys to a brand new Lamborghini. You drop them on the floor. Someone else tries to give you $10 million. You push it aside and you stand there in horror at your impending fate. Suddenly, you hear a voice say, Here's a parachute! Which of those four people is going to hold the most credibility in your eyes? The one with the parachute. Because it's your knowledge of the law of gravity and what it can do to you that causes you to turn to the good news of the parachute. In the same way, knowledge of what God's moral law will do to you on the Day of Judgment produces a fear that makes the Gospel unspeakably good news. It solves your dilemma of God's wrath. Jesus took your punishment upon Himself, and the demands of eternal justice were satisfied the moment He cried, It is finished. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. We broke the law. But God became a human being to pay a fine in His own life's blood. Then He rose from the dead and defeated death. That means God can forgive every sin you've ever committed and cancel your death sentence. When you repent and trust in Jesus Christ, you can say with the Apostle Paul, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death.
So you no longer need to be afraid of death, and you don't need to look any further for how to be made right with God. <clears throat> the Savior is God's gift to you. It is unspeakably good news. Now God will justify you, He'll cleanse you, wash you clean, and give you the righteousness you need on the Day of Judgment. He can save you from death and hell and grant you everlasting life, something you cannot earn and you do not deserve. Again, what you must do is repent of your sins, turn from them, and receive the gift of eternal life by putting your trust in Jesus Christ, trusting in Him alone for your salvation. That means you forsake your own good works as a means of trying to please God, that is, trying to bribe Him, and trust only in Jesus. Simply throw yourself on the mercy of the judge, and God says He's rich in mercy to all that call upon Him. So call upon Him now. Today, confess your sins to God, put your trust in Jesus Christ to save you, and you'll pass from death to life. You've got God's promise on it. You could pray something like this. Dear God, today I turn from all of my sins and name them and say, I put my trust in Jesus Christ alone as Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. Grant me the gift of everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now have faith in God. He's absolutely trustworthy. Never doubt His promises. He's not a man that He should lie to you. The sincerity of your prayer will be evidenced by your obedience to God's will. So get a Bible and read His Word daily and obey what you read, and God will never let you down. So let's just stop all this silliness about false religions and cults and just get things right with God through the gospel and start loving each other like we should. No wonder the word gospel means good news. The fact that everlasting life is a free gift of God is unspeakably good news for Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Catholics, Protestants, atheists, agnostics, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Scientologists, Gnostics, Satanists, secular humanists, New Ages, and for you. If we can be of any further help to you, please let us know. right now, where do you think you go? I would go to hell. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Ask God to forgive me for my sins and for, um, repent. And what else? There's two things you got to do. And give up everything that I do to, to sin, stop from sinning. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Otherwise you're just a reformed criminal. You've got to have your sins washed away and he's the only one who can do it. Okay, so if you died today, you'd end up in hell if your heart gave out. You've got to repent and trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When are you going to do that? I might start today. When? Start today. Start today. Would you like to pray and yield your life to Christ now? Yeah. Do you want to pray and then I'll pray for you? Or do you want to turn the camera off? Well, you, you yield your life to the Lord. It doesn't matter what you say, it's your heart that matters, and then I'll pray for you, okay? Um, Jesus, I'm coming before you right now to ask you to forgive me for all my sins, all my discretions, and everything that I have done in my life that wasn't right. Please forgive me for everything that I have done. Give me the strength to follow your name and then carry on with the faith of your word and your name. Amen. Visit wayofthemaster.com and sign up for our free online newsletter. Get our DVD training courses. And listen to the daily radio broadcast at wayofthemasterradio.com. Don't miss our transformed and deeper conferences. And join the Ambassadors Academy. Three days of intensive training with Ray, Kirk, and the rest of our ministry team. You can also order this episode, along with the rest of our Season 3 episodes, containing never-before-seen footage. Go to wayofthemaster.com for details. Many years ago in Auckland, New Zealand, a man tried skydiving for the first time. He was so overwhelmed by the free fall, he forgot to pull his ripcord. His friends saw him plummet to the ground. Fortunately, he had landed on a freshly plowed field. He had broken one of his legs and his leg bone was sticking vertical. He looked up at his friends and said, Boy, did I blow it. Whatever you do, don't blow it for eternity. There's nothing more important than your eternal salvation.